In this series of three videos I'm going to show you a complete visual guide to the mid-journey imagine command parameters. This will be especially useful for you if you are a beginner using mid-journey for the first time, wanting to generate AI art, or if you are using mid-journey already this will be a valuable visual reference for those parameters you may have missed or want to know a little more about in depth. I'm going to show examples of character art as well as more prop based art to give you a feel of how some of these parameters affect the results. To start with, why do we need to input text commands to get Midjourney to work in the first place? Why not have a simpler web page interface? There is no doubt this would be a popular option, but Midjourney is a little different in that it uses the Discord platform. Discord has been designed for communities to easily communicate together using instant messaging and was originally used for gamers. Discord allows for a large scale of users in a group and is also great as a developer platform. I think having a command based prompt in Discord has some advantages, including still being able to use older parameters, even older versions for the mid-journey algorithms. So all the parameters I'll be talking about are used with the forward slash imagine command, the command that actually generates your AI art. How many parameters are there? There is at least 21 at the last count in November 2022. I'll classify these and mention a few of them that are the most important for you as well as some little used parameters that are quite surprising and powerful at the same time. Keep watching and I'll explain about these secret parameters towards the end of the video. The good news is that you can get a number of these parameters to default, so you don't need to worry about typing in these parameters each time you want to generate art. So here's the basic structure of your imagine command. At its simplest level, you can just type in an English description, even using other languages, to direct mid-journey to generate the art. The description can be separated by commas. With no parameters, everything will be using defaults, including the aspect ratio of the art, which will be square. At the end of your description, you add parameters, which are all starting with two dashes. The imagine command also allows an address or URL of a reference image or even more than one reference image as inputs for the generator. These always go at the start of the prompt, followed by the description, followed by the parameters. First off, let's look at the version parameter. The version allows you to generate AI art with the previous mid-journey algorithms. As you go back in time and as you use the earlier versions, you tend to end up with more abstract, more incoherent artwork using those older algorithms. Let's see the difference using an example with a character based artwork. So here's an example of using a likeness of a Tom Hanks character at 10 years old, just sitting on a park bench. So you can see from the version one, even the head shape of the character is just not well defined. You know, all the elements we would expect to see uh, for his face are a little bit kind of morphed and rubberized, uh, not so good. Version two is kind of an improvement, but the expression is off, um, quite neutral. You've got um, a face that isn't really quite coherent still in version 2. Version 3 is certainly better and we can see a, a likeness to Tom Hanks there and in some cases it's given us an older version of the character. And by the time we get to version 4 the difference is stunning. Uh, so we have a very coherent park bench and the character themselves, the the facial features, the head, the proportions of the body parts, everything is working really, really well. And there's even a number of different styles in there that we can pick from as well. Uh, a, a great variety to 
start this character project. Here's an example of a very specific aeroplane, a Supermarine Spitfire Mark V. And for version 1, we're just getting kind of bits of the aeroplane, and sometimes they're chopped up and not even coherent or placed together properly, so it's very confusing. Uh, for version 2, we're getting something that at least is a, a complete kind of object, but again, the aircraft parts are dis distorted. We're getting a sense of the wings, of the tail fin, and again, it's just not that coherent. Version 3 makes some kind of step forward, uh, and at least we're getting the aircraft on the runway, because my prompt included to show the, the Spitfire on the runway. And version 4, again, is a measurable, very large step indeed. Great difference where we have a recognisable aeroplane and it looks to be like a very close to a Spitfire. And we've got the insignia, we've got all of the aeroplane parts, uh, very coherent, everything's tied together and you're, you're ending up with some quite beautiful art and interpretations of this prompt. So next we'll look at the seed parameter. What is the seed used in AI art for? Well, AI art is all about the algorithms attempting to see an image in the noise. It's a little bit like us when we recognize a shape or an outline in a seemingly random setting, a little bit like the ink blot test or looking at tea leaves at the bottom of your tea cup. Now, finding out the specific seed number that was used to generate an image uh, can be super useful. It means you can use that same starting point, this specific seed number, across different prompts that may produce some very similar looking artwork. And this is really useful if you are creating sequential artwork and you're looking for consistency between the frames of characters, locations and props. So in the artwork comparison that you've seen for the versions parameter, I used the seed parameter in each case, hoping to be fairer in making those comparisons. Now, how do you get the seed, that starting point that these algorithms use? Uh, click on the, an image that has been generated. Right, that is right click it. Go to add reactions, select other reactions and at this point search for ENV you know starting for the word envelope and click on that first envelope symbol. Once done that envelope becomes a permanent option and you'll right click when you click on a generated piece of art in mid journey. So let's talk about the same seed parameter. It's for using in a generation of art where you want to see just small variations in the grid that Midjourney provides. And it can take any positive integer. And in this case, I tried to force Midjourney to use a reference image and to use the input of that reference image to influence the resulting artwork. In this case it didn't really do that uh, but this does demonstrate the uh, same seed working here with just those little variations. Same seed can only work with version 3 or before not version 4 of Midjourney at the moment. Here's an example of some character artwork with Tom Hanks at 10 years old and wearing a blue jumper and again I tried to use a reference image to inform the output use same seed with a different positive integer and this is what occurred and yes the character's hair is very consistent uh, the facial features are very consistent even the jumper 
the texture and the colouring uh, very consistent indeed. So same seed certainly has its uses, especially for sequential artwork. Now for the quality parameter, quality changes how much time is spent generating your image and there are in total five specific values that you can set. 0 0.25, 0 0.5, 1, 2 and 5. 5 is experimental and can only be used for version 3 or below and you may end up with creative and detailed results but it may not be as you expect. Uh, for version 4 you can use the values of 0.25 to 2. Uh, with 0.25 you get really rough results and but it is four times faster and, and cheaper. The default is 1. 0.5 is less detailed results but uh, two times faster and cheaper and for the quality 2 more detailed results certainly but two times slower and two times the price. I've tried quality 5 on the Temple of Petra and it did indeed take at least five minutes to generate this artwork so it does take a long long time uh, compared to the other quality values. I've also produced a Devon Rex cat sitting in the sun on an ancient stone wall and here's the results. So here's my Devon Rex cat breed uh, shown in, in version 3 of Mid Journey and for the version 0.25 definitely rough and ready uh, but the, the cat itself seems quite incoherent the facial features um, are certainly not there uh, and even for the better quality version cat features are, are not that great uh, the stone wall is has been done uh, to some some accuracy but generally version 3 of my Devon Rex cat didn't turn out so well uh, but when it comes to version 4 the difference in quality uh, setting between 0.25 and 2 uh, I wouldn't say there's a, a great deal uh, you know the fur of the cat is detailed the details on the the ears because this breed is known for the quite large ears on these cats. The details in both versions um, are really good and the stone wall has uh, some great detailing, uh, great background as well. So like I said version 4 the the quality difference in my mind uh, for characters and settings uh, are, are not that different. So now I'm looking at the parameter of stop and this is this could be useful it stops the generation of the artwork at an earlier percentage but doesn't work with upscales of art and you can use a number between 10 and 100 percent stop is interesting to map that progress of the AI art generator as it brings images into greater and greater detail something like a result at 80 percent with a little less detail may actually suit your purposes and take a little less processing time. For my character based example I've included in the prompt very highly detailed photography of a face with a Venetian mask. I've also used the same starting seed in each case where I've tested the stop at 10, 50 and 80 percent. And at 50 percent the results are not quite, not really usable. But you can see at 80% there's a little less detail there, uh, particularly on the Venetian mask, and that could be that could be usable. Uh, I could use that, and I may be seeking for something where I don't need so much detail for the final result. I also tried a new setting. Uh, the city of Cordoba in Spain but shown with more greens and styled with a particular artist in mind 
Again, I use the same seed to test at 10, 50 and 80%. And again, at 80% the artwork could be used, though some of the detailing is a little fuzzy. So finally, the mystery parameter for mid-journey that I'm going to mention is tile. Now tile is not in the user documentation and it does allow you to create seamless textures and does a good good job with that. This can work with versions 1 to 3 but not version 4 and it can also work with upscaled images as well. This, uh, this example I used the prompt of artisan Greco-Roman mosaic. I also tried using the prompt of top down uh, and that's recommended to include a, a phrase that forces the view to be top down or aerial so you get that correct view for for tiling for that for that texture and you know this is super useful for wallpaper for gaming textures for 3d models just creating your own just for just for that reason alone you know suddenly mid, mid journey becomes a really really useful tool for artists here's one of a texture from the antelope canyon in utah national park fantastic colors beautiful wavy rock texture again tiles pretty well and there's a facility where you can check how well that artwork does seamless tiling so if you go to sidechung.com checker and you can just drop the artwork onto the website and you can even adjust the tile width to see how it looks at different scales. So I really recommend using Midjourney to create your own unique textures. I'm Paul Bussey from Digital Art Live and we have live webinar workshops each week in our community where we learn cost-effective digital art tools to tell visual stories. Even if you're just telling a story with one rendered image, connect with us at digitalartlive.studio and you can use the link in the description below to join our free forum. So now you know these parameters, which has been the most useful to you to learn and why? Let me know in the comments below. I'd be fascinated to find out what you've learned. Please like and subscribe if you found this video of value and join us for part two to explore more parameters for the Imagine command.